Ladies and gentlemen, Chris. Oh, family my proxy! <laughs> how you doing today, dude? Good, how are you? I'm doing excellent. I appreciate you being here. I, I talk to Spaz all the time. He's on the show often, but it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Uh, bef I, I, this is kind of a fun interview, too. We normally don't have a co-host that's in the band also interview his own band which i think it's gonna be kind of a fun one how did you guys first meet well i was actually in a country band that was recording with that track studios with eric and that's how i met him and then and he just um, liked your, your, the country <laughs> twang you had going on and he was like bro come join this metal band yeah. <laughs> that, that makes well, no sense but <laughs> I, I love it <laughs> Well, I, I come from a metal background. Oh, okay. I've been playing for a lot of years. I've been in all kinds of bands, cover bands, original bands, 80s, 90s, yeah, whatever. Yeah, Spaz. Anthony hopping in too real quick. <laughs> he gives me crap all the time because I do love 80s music. Bro, we used to do this thing called Song for Shots. Like, he can name, like, any 80s, like, if you play an 80s rock song or something like that, he can get it within five seconds every time. Oh man, that's like the that's like that game show on TV where you have to like beat Shazam. We were uh, actually we almost went on it with uh, what what with our with our old singer. I tried out for it. Yeah, and I almost were on that show. How did how do you how do you like test for that? Uh, what they are? Uh, yeah, Chris, you answer that shit. I don't have to answer. <laughs> well, we had like a video chat with the producer or whoever they um, had on the video call with us. And he just talked to us, and he he loved us from what we could tell, and we never heard anything back from him. It was a lot of fun trying out for it. Oh yeah, dang, that's, that's too bad you didn't hear won, anything back. Way. But that, that's that's <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So you know well, your 80s want, knowledge for sure. They want you to be like super animated, like oh, oh yeah, I got it, I got it. It's woo. So we're just like, but we nailed every one of them. But it's just eh, we're just band members. <laughs> they don't care. Ant's, Ant's hopping in here in just a second. His uh, his camera and uh, mic are off. It's kind of defaults that way, but we'll get him here in just a minute. Uh, Chris, I do like to do a, a trivia portion of the show. Are you down to do some trivia a little bit later on? And if so, do you have any hot sauce at your house? <laughs> Don't worry. You get to pick the trivia. You're the, man, you're the 80s knowledge guy. We can do an 80s movie uh, or I TV show. So, yeah. So the, the, it, oh, cool. the way it works, the way it works is you'll pick a movie or a TV show from any any era, something you've seen a thousand times, so you will not get stumped. But if I do stump you, take a swig of hot sauce. Whether you win or lose, I'll do some hot sauce with you. It's, it's just kind of fun. And then we ask you questions while your mouth's on fire. Well, the only thing that I'm confident I know everything about, and I probably regret saying that, is the show Friends. Friends? You can okay. ask me pretty much anything, and I'll, got, I'll get it. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll get there. Uh, hopefully, Ant gets gets his thing up and running here in a second. But uh, so, what what did you think about about Elk before before he ended up joining the band as vocalist? Like, had you had you played with him a couple times as well? Uh, was there anybody else that you guys considered before he ended up being the guy? There was there was a few that we, we considered. But nothing really jumped out at us. And then once we met with Elk, I'd never met him before. Um, but once we met up and just the first probably 20 minutes we talked, yeah, just instant chemistry, got along with everybody, just fit right in. Andy's in the Andy building! Yeah. Ant is here. Ant Man. Hell yeah, he also but, looks uh, like he's in like a second grade kids' classroom or something. <laughs> <laughs> It's all you find short notice. Oh, no worries, dude. Thank you for being here. I, I'm gonna ask you the same question, and then I'm gonna let Spaz uh, knock out some some kind of fun ones. But, uh, Ant, how did you meet the rest of the fellas? What's what's the story of how you ended up joining the band? So this it started actually from a, the original singer when I f first joined. Uh, we were in a similar similar line of work, and I was like, "Hey, you guys, uh, do you guys need a, a another guitarist?" 
And so he's like, actually, you know, I'm thinking that we may need somebody. So, you know, I, I got some samples and this is no joke. I got some samples of the music. And I'm like, Ugh, I, you know, oh, I don't I don't know what it it sounds like there's some great potential. And I'm like, but the recordings suck. And so then I, it's like, just come to the show. I'm like, I've got to make it a point because there's some riffs. I, I can hear it. I can hear, I can hear the music. There's something there. So I go to the I go to the first show and I was like, oh god, you guys are so much better live. I swear your music doesn't your recording music does do no justice whatsoever, right? So then I got to the show and said, yep, you guys need me. <laughs> so what's the uh, what's so the did schedule? you did what? you connect them to Nick after you joined? Say that again, sorry. Did were you the one that connected them to Nick? No, that was actually. Um, our, our singer before Elk, uh, that was Rob, who who had that connection with Nick Miller. So that came a little bit later. So I was one of the last, um, you know, the the three guys, Chris, Chris Spaz and Chuck were the kind of the original three, right? We had an original singer and then he left. We had Rob come in, second vocalist. But when I came, then it was basically the four of us uh, from that point on. And that's been about three years. And then... Um, then when Rob came in, we discovered Nick and then it just kind of changed the, musically. And I think we all just advanced our level, um, exponentially. It just changed quite a bit since we got with Nick. Said so we leveled up. Yes. Yeah. And that's the one that knew Elk prior. Gotcha. Yeah. Spaz, uh, let's, that was, I'm going to let you take over for a second and, uh, <laughs> get, let's get a little uh, crazy. I, I mean, I'm not going to pick on the bass player, but I mean, Chris knows I love him. Um, what? It, for once, yeah. you're not going to pick on me? <laughs> no, I'm going to pick on you. I, I got a question. I, I, got, I, I, got, I got friends trivia for you, but um, if you weren't playing a bass, what would you be doing musically, if music at all? Drums. I started out as a drummer. I still love to play drums. What if? What if you weren't? What if you weren't involved okay. in, in music? What <laughs> I've if sat it, on your set a couple times, but you haven't been there. What if you weren't involved in music at all, Chris? Yeah. Well, it would be like illustration or digital design, something with art. Okay, cool. Uh, like with yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's good with artwork. I forgot about that. Very cool. So, Ant. Um, or, ta since... or a tattoo artist. I might be a tattoo artist. Hell yeah. All right. All right, Ann, I got a good one for you, uh, especially for bands that are listening or, or watching. Um, what would you say would be one of the most important things on how to promote yourself? I mean, we went to NAMM together. You learned a lot of stuff. What is the like one of the key things that you to help promote yourself? Uh, it's a, that's a great question. I think I think it comes from sort of a marketing background right you've got to brand yourself and have a product have something that's different that's unique and i i think all in all the most important thing is be authentic and what we what we see a lot are these carbon copies right and you're like yeah you know you may be great you might be doing this but you're exactly like the other person you behave you mimic you do everything be your, be yourself and just adopt that and exploit that I mean, that's your, that's your brand. You are your own brand. And I think if you take advantage and highlight those, um, what was it? I think Steve Vai even said something along those lines. I never focused on my weaknesses. I just expanded on my strengths, right? Just keep building on them. And I think then that starts to resonate because that's true to who you are. That's your character. You're doing something constantly. Excel in what you are strong at. And then it starts to translate starts to translate to the audience and such. So I think definitely being authentic and then focus on your brand. Who who are you? What type of a musician or artist are you? Stand out, do something different. You can you could yeah. take you could take influence and inspiration, but just be genuine at the same time, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I like it. And have you ever seen the TV show Friends? Yes, I have. Have you seen it as many times as Chris claims he has? <laughs> No, I don't think anybody has. Not even close. Chris, go go get go get the hot sauce if you haven't already, because we're gonna ask you some friends trivia here in a second. And uh, 
Hey, here it is right here. Okay. Oh, God. That's nice. All right. Spaz, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Hell, hell, hell yes, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, Chris, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of give you like a softball because I'm bougie as shit. But here you go. Rachel got a job with a company in Paris. Who was it? <laughs> I know I spoke too soon. Um, Get him. Vandalay Industries. <laughs> Who? I think, it was, I think it was Gucci. Close, but no. That is not correct. Oh my god! That is the first stump softball, right there. Man. That was a softball, dude. I love Louis Vuitton. I'm not, into, I'm not into fashion, man. I'll Louis join Vuitton, you, on, bro. I'll join you in some hot sauce. I have New Delhi cayenne yeah, pepper. Go. Cheers. Tell me, tell me, uh, who takes the longest when you guys go work with Nick? Who takes the longest to do their parts? Ooh. Uh, well, ain't me. Well. That's a hard one. I would I would have to say Chris is probably the fastest to record. Um, I think like when we lay down the guitars, it's it's tough because we will change a lot on the spot. Yeah. So I would then say the guitars probably take the longest. So then it would be me. I guess I'm I take the longest. We keep manipulating the music, so blame me, I guess, for the time it takes to get the stuff right. No worries. Yeah, but in, in, in time periods, he's talking like three hours. As, that's long for us. Yeah. We're in and out, really. Hell yeah. What, what, what do you guys want to, when you when you look back, let's say it's December of this year, and you look back, what would you like to have accomplished by the end of the year? <laughs> Our second EP, for sure. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I want to play in front of another 8,000 people. That's what I'd love to do. Yeah, more That's, festivals would be nice. Yeah. Just would, a packed house of several thousand people again, I think, would be just amazing. Hell, yeah. That's I think I think it's most band streams. But have you guys ever had that opportunity before? Yeah. At Blue, Blue Ridge, we got to play. play. Blue Ridge. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Spice talking about that a while back. Yeah, Blue Ridge. Hell, yeah. 2020. That was a lot of fun. Very cool. I have a somewhat easy, easy trivia one also, so we'll we'll give it another try here, Chris. Rachel and Ross have right. a baby at the end of season eight. What is the baby's name? Emma. There you go. So now, Emma, now you're good. Yeah. We got you one. We got you one. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm, I've seen friends like four times there, so I'll, I'll just do a little bit more of this right here. Uh, Spaz, hit him with no. All right. What store does Phoebe hate? Pottery Barn. God damn it. All right, he has seen it a bunch of times. <laughs> wow. Who's a, uh, who's, really? I know that you guys uh, have, have something coming with Envision here in the future as far as a feature. Is there, is there consideration for having another vocalist down the road? Maybe not on this particular EP, but assuming that it, it turns out the way you want it, uh, is there an artist that you have in mind as a additional like feature vocalist? I kind of control that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it's bad. No, seriously, no. Uh, Chris Bowles, uh, we're we're communicating. Um, we got a lot of uh, local singers that want to jump on with us, and, and we just make a party and a celebration of a song, you know. Um, but I'd love to hear what Chris and Ant have to say because think Norm Skinner's off. We can't we we can't say him. So think of outside the box. Who would you want to try to network with to get a, on a vocal track? I I personally think if we have something on a softer side. I would love to see a duet with a female vocalist. I think that would be so sweet having a female vocalist. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like that idea. And there's a lot of great female vocalists on lo local band Smoke that we find out about daily. We can we can For we sure. can help connect it if needed. It's no problem. We got it. I'm thinking like maybe Mac Dillon, something like that. Woo. Or um, gosh, I, I forgot that band. Uh, it was, I've got it in my messages, but a couple weeks ago, or maybe a couple months ago, there was a female fronted band, just blew us away. Um, it, it, there's so many bands that you play it's hard to, to name how but, long ago yeah. was it how long ago was it uh, uh we interviewed them 
I was the co-host, and I picked on the bass player. Of course you did. I gotta. Pick I gotta. I gotta go back and look. We, because we everybody so picks people. on bass players. When was the last time you heard anybody pick on a drummer? Mish of Horizon. Oh yeah. No. Mm. Uh, they're not. Can I don't know if they were Canadian, but they were talking about they're coming through the West Coast. Um, oh, they were. They were good though. Gosh. Um, oh my God. I I don't remember. But um, fellas, let's say let's say we do get another one of those eight thousand person shows uh, where it's one of those big ones, and uh, it's time to party backstage. A, who is the last man standing when we're all having a, an excellent drinking night? And B, oh. what is the go to munchy snack after that party? Well, usually it's Eric and I that outlast everybody else. We've gone to Nam before and. Uh, going to Virginia and everything else. It's usually Eric and I. Everyone else is snoring. What? what yeah. What are you munching on? I think we. I think we're grabbing Taco Bell. I don't. Th I think. Yeah. We drop <laughs> Taco Bell. We drop like a hundred bucks at Taco Bell. A hundred? <laughs> um, bro. <laughs> that's like yeah. sixty burritos, bro. Yeah. Oh. It was yeah, bag yeah. After bag after bag. Talking about holding up the line. No, they're forgetting about the eighty-five dollar at Jack in the Box. Oh yeah, no, that was the night. Yeah, we, we had them reopen. They we had the RV. We couldn't get to the drive-through, and they weren't serving to anybody through the door. Knocking on the door. So, but we knock on it. We're like, guys, come on, man. Look, we're gonna order a ton of shit. Can you just like, you know, we'll drop it. We'll drop a fat tip too. <laughs> we gave him like a. I don't know, fifteen twenty dollar tip. I think it was, just to make our food, and we didn't have to go through drive through. It was it was a hundred dollars. So they order. let you in because of the tip. Well, we stayed outside, but they brought us the food, made it. They brought it outside. Oh, okay, so, gosh, gotcha. that's cool. Um, but they hooked us up with stuff. I'm like, all right, there we go. What? But yeah. Do you, do you guys have any phobias? Like this scares you. It could be spiders. It could be heights. Anything. What? What? What scares you? I'm not going to say anything because someone will bring it to the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, I, I don't like scorpions. Snakes I love. Spiders are cool. Scorpions I don't like. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of snakes. Saz, what freaks you out? Losing. What like that? Failure. That's honestly... Uh, or like what freaks me out is my friends dying. That's honestly, I'm not really scared of anything, but that's really failure and my friends dying. That's yeah. That's I mean, that's deep. That's deep. Uh, do you guys commonly see a band that maybe opens up for you uh, at a local show, make the same mistake that you maybe have made many years ago, but it's just not your place to be like, bro, don't do that. Like, but is there is there a common mistake you see local bands make? I've seen some get upset on stage. <laughs> About you what? You can tell they get upset with each other on stage, and that's just something you don't do. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You're there to entertain, not be pissed off at someone else in the band. That's one mistake I've seen. Yeah, don't do that. Save it for after. Yep. I, I could say, like, one of the things is... Um, thinking you're better than everybody else. I mean, even if we open or we, we headline or we close, we're all, we just love being out in the crowd, out, out with the other bands. We always watch the other bands play, at least one of us. I mean, if we're, you know, networking or whatever, cause it, you know, being in a band is a business, but we make sure one of us pays attention to the other band, you know, and you know, when we play with nationals and we watch nationals watch us and it's like, it's very humbling and it's like, shit, we, you know, hey, even sometimes there's younger generation that come and play with us. We're like, dude, watch the other bands. You know, we're paving the way. You owe it to them because if we weren't playing or the other band wasn't playing, your ass wouldn't be playing either. So, you know, it, it's kind of like paying the respects. You know, not everybody has to watch and enjoy the show. I mean, we'll go out and smoke or whatever, but one of us is paying attention to what's going on. Ah, I love that. I totally agree. And I love that. What is uh, 
So just we only have time for a couple more, but what is aside from Devil, your favorite song on the new EP that we have not heard yet? Is there is there a tentative title to the song we have not heard yet? Don't say it, Chris. I'll say well, I'm it. I'm gonna say it. Fuck you. <laughs> Go ahead. It's my go. new one we're working on. It's called Adoration, and so stoked by it. It's it's my son, eight years old. He's eight years old. He's like. Dad, I had that song um, that you guys were playing it stuck in my head. I'm like, that's amazing. My eight-year-old is like the adoration song, you know, and he's stumbled over the word a little bit because we named it three different things. So he didn't know which one it was. <laughs> it's gone through several name changes. Um, but that one, I'm so stoked for. I think that's going to be my favorite one coming up. Well, no surprise. BG's heard them all, so. I hear like just like tidbit snippets in the like work in progress though. So, which is cool. And then the spaz is cool enough to let me hear that and be like, oh, I think that this part would be cool if you did this. And sometimes, you know, that gets used. And sometimes he says, well, that's a really f dumb idea. I'm not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but you got to think about it though, BG. Like, again, with uh, Devil, if you wouldn't have said, hey, pitch up your vocals a little bit, you know, if, if I were to say it, um, you know, not not that the band would be like, hey, Spaz, you just want to hear yourself. No, but like you said, hey, bring the scream up just a smidge. I messaged Nick. He's like, yeah, you're right. We did it. And it's it sounds really good. So we you know, we we know people in the industry and, and we send it out to them, get their feedback. What should we do different? You know, hey, do you like it? And, and a lot of times they may not like it, but we're going to like, hey, but this is us. This is what we're going to do. And you know, hit or miss, you know, it, it's all on the uh, listeners that decide that, not us. I mean, we, my favorite song is Funhouse, especially with Alex from Envision doing it. I mean, you know, we have to duck out the solo because we're going to have two different versions of it. We're going to have the one with him and then the one without him. And then one without him has Ant Solo, which was really badass. So we got to keep that in one of the versions for sure. Uh, yeah. Chris, Ant, we're, we're about out of time, but what do you gentlemen have? plan the rest of the day at once this is concluded is there anything fun you guys got going on after this oh just relaxing after work today they pick up the bass play for a little while that's about it cool i i got a birthday cake waiting for me it was my birthday on easter so we delayed it until today so hey, hey. People! <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> celebrating time well gentlemen this is a lot of fun man I, I appreciate you guys being here uh i'm glad we were able to get one stump out of the out of friends chris uh so well, i take pride in those and thank you oh, yeah. for for showing up dude we really appreciate it we're excited about uh funhouse coming out and uh the rest of the the ep maybe we can do this again in december we'll take we'll do what we said about talking about looking back and hopefully we've accomplished everything that you guys discussed and uh we can mean we can be talking about hey we played three or four festivals last time we talked to you BG, ten thousand deep son not eight thousand yeah. ten thousand. <laughs> well, fellas, I, I appreciate it, man. Different. Thank you much. Thank you for Love having you. us. Love you, boys. See you tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Favorite practice. Give me a hell yeah.